Once upon a time, there were two shows about grim fairy tales. Let's go here, so pop it. Go back up and check those twiddle chair of rage. Hello and welcome to Mario Pacheco's Little Chair of Rage. I'm Mario Pacheco, and this is my solo chair. Now, I've mentioned before that I've become disillusioned by network television, but that this year there have been a whole slew of very promising new shows on network TV that I have come to enjoy. I've already shared my thoughts on Fox's Terra Nova, which despite fans' best efforts did end up get, being cancelled. Fox sucks. Anyway, two of my other favorite shows have garnered a lot of positive attention and have thankfully both been renewed for second seasons. These are Grimm on NBC and Once Upon a Time on ABC. If you're at all familiar with these shows, you'll notice that they have one big thing in common. They're both based on fairy tales. You probably noticed that darker, more mature adaptations of fairy tales have been a trend these days, mostly in comic books and movies, but it's practically turning into its own genre. Now they finally made their way into TV. But of these two fairy tale shows, which one is the better of the two? I will now review Grimm vs. Once Upon a Time to determine which one is the better show. I will do my best to avoid spoilers, but in this case I have no guarantee. Both these shows have a lot of things going for them. Grimm is created by David Greenwald. Who is he, you ask? David Greenwald was a co-executive producer of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and co-created Angel. I love Buffy and Angel. You can definitely see the noir atmosphere that Angel had at work on Grimm. The protagonist Nick, who has, who has a trick titular Grimm, has the ability to see fairy tale monsters hidden among the rest of humanity. In early episodes, has some of that same broodiness the angel had, although it's not as overwhelming. Well, what would Once Upon a Time study be? Well, Once Upon a Time is created by Edward Kitsis and Adam Horowitz. Who are they? They are two of the writers of Lost. I still think Lost is the best show ever. Not only that, but there are lots of little references to Lost peppered throughout the show. The numbers show up, the clock is stuck on 8.15, and Regina's health number is 108. All candy bars, a touch of whiskey, and in the episode of Stranger, you see an Oceanic Airlines plane fly overhead. Adam Dale and Emily DeRavin from Lost also appear on the show as well. So both Brandon Once Upon a Time have creators of my favorite show behind it. Now back to Grimm. Monroe. I love Monroe. <laughs> He's probably the most quirky new character on TV right now. In a weird way, I can't help but feel he's like the big bad wolf version of Kramer from Seinfeld. He's a blue bot, a big bad wolf creature. But he's turned his back on that life and controls his urges by being a vegetarian and doing Pilates. Yeah. <laughs> he's into retro sorts of things like old trains and cameras. Certainly Grimm's breakout character. The only problem I have is that there seems to be a kink in his character development. Initially, Monroe is the only participant in Nick and his adventures. In Beware, for example, he has to bribe him with a bottle of Merlot to get him to help him out. Later on, in those now some men, after being attacked by Reapers, Monroe vows he will continue to help Nick out. By the episode of Organ Grinder, after having dinner together and no wonders why Nick doesn't ask him about his life, rather than just creature stuff. And Karen tell under having been talking to him. By the episodes Cat and Mouse and Big Feet when Ro is calling on Nick to help him out with creature stuff. The problem is I don't clearly see the point where Monroe goes from unwilling participant to Nick's friend. From the beginning, Monroe does have a fascination with the Grimm. In the early episode of Lonely Hearts, Monroe is excited about helping Nick out even though he apparently changed his phone number to keep Nick from calling him. And Nick has to pay him as well. The episode Let Your Hair Down is the last episode Monroe initially refuses to help. I guess you could say the events of this episode, the previous episode, 
Three Bad Wolves, and subsequent episode Game Over. Can Vincent Monroe devout his allegiance to Nick in the following episode of Mouse of Man? But does Once Upon a Time have a character's interest in Monroe? Well, it does. Once Upon a Time is August Wayne Boo. Pretty cool. He's apparently a writer. He rides a motorcycle. He's traveled to Nepal and Phuket. Lost reference. <laughs> He's somehow been to Storybook before and has some knowledge of the curse. The interesting part, though, is who it turns out August really is. I'm not going to spoil what that is. You find out his backstory in the episode The Stranger. I will say, though, that he is the most fascinating interpret interpretation of this character I have ever seen. What's also interesting is that he ends up in the predicament he's in because he apparently never learned his lesson from when he was a child. The third thing I like about Grimm is the use of German for the names of the various types of Vessen, or creature in German, which is an apt name for them. Jetzt habe ich Deutsch studiert etwas fünf Jahre. Ich liebe das Grimm, gibt mir die Möglichkeit zu in Deutsch. However, the Vessen names are highly metaphorical. For example, Big Bad Wolf Vessen, like Monroe, are called Bupa, which means bloodbath. Troll Vessen are called Hesslisch, which just means ugly. NBC's Grimm website provides translations for some of these names, which are just plain wrong. <laughs> for example, the Rat Vessen from the episode Don Tocal are called Rhyming. The website says it means pure rat, when it's actually a verb that means to clean. Yeah. I swear I could come up with better names for Vessen. I don't see why they can't just use German words for troll and ogre for hessisch and zinbarsla respectively. Why can't they just call Blutbad something like Grosserwolf, which just means big wolf? Maybe they just want it to sound foreign and the German words um, for like their wolf, the mouse, and the fuchs sound too much like their English equivalents. Also, they seem to try very hard to find a creature that fits into a particular fairy tale and doesn't originally have an animal in it. For example, the episode Lonely Hearts, based on the story Bluebeard, has a goat vest in it. An organ grinder based on Hansel and Gretel has vulture vests, even though they already have the witch vest. Grimm once upon a time also differ in the types of fairy tales they use. ABC being owned by Disney gives Once Upon a Time the advantage of using the very familiar Disney versions of fairy tales. For example, Jiminy Cricket and the Blue Fairy are the versions of the characters from the Disney film Pinocchio, rather than from the original story by Carlo Collodi. Means the Seven Dwarves are from the Disney film Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, rather than the original Grimbrough story where they are named. However, the versions of the stories are not completely based on the Disney film versions. Once Upon a Time gives different twists to the stories than the Disney or the traditional versions, and gives us a sort of the story behind the more familiar story. Grimm, on the other hand, while relying on the more familiar fairy tales, also utilizes more obscure tales from traditions around the world. Or some of their episodes are very loosely based on the fairy tale in question, and it's sometimes hard to tell what the story it is they're trying to retell. For example, the very disturbing episode of The Thing with the Feathers looks like it's based on the goose that lay in the gold neck, but the website claims it's based on a Hans Christian Andersen tale called The Nightingale. Go figure. At least once upon a time to know what the story being told is. The grim versions of the fairy tale is also much darker and mature. The aforementioned The Thing with the Feathers features a bird vessel woman being forced by a concoction with a pump to produce a golden egg and a gland in her throat. Mm. Another thing I like about Once Upon a Time is that the characters have meaningful names in storybook that refer back to who they were in the fairy tale. For example, Snow White's name in storybook is Mary Margaret Blanchard. The name Blanchard is derived from the French word for white, 
Rumpelstiltskin becomes Mr. Gold. Rumpelstiltskin leaves Straw and Integral. Red Riding Hood becomes Ruby. Ruby's a shade red. Some of the best of them Grimm also had meaningful names, but not to the same extent. Once Upon a Time also has this more weakened family quality to it. See the link below if you don't know about Philip Plus and Farmer and the Wolf Newton family. But basically all these seemingly unconnected fictional works share the same characters who are sometimes related to each other, as well as continuity, artifacts, mm -hmm. etc. In episodes The Thing You Love Most and True Mark, we discover that the Sleeping Curse from Snow White was the same as the one from Sleeping Beauty, and that the Apple came Snow White came from the witch from Hansel and Gretel. In The Price of Gold and Skin Deep, Rumpelstiltskin takes the place of the fairy godmother in Cinderella and the beast in Beauty and the Beast, respectively. The episode Fruit from the Poisonous Tree seems to indicate that the genie from the film Aladdin is also the evil queen's magic mirror from Snow White. I've always been a fan of crossover fiction. I just think it's cool watch, just watching how all these characters come together and interact with each other. Once Upon a Time shares a loss, a lack of clarity of who the heroes and villains in the story are. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It makes the story realistic and more complex. Unlost characters often took different sides and aligned themselves with different groups, and often switched from one side or group to the other. Traditionally, fairy tales have very clearly delineated heroes and villains. Once Upon a Time plays around with those conventions. Some of the heroes have flaws and secrets, and the villains have some justifications for feeling the way they do. The episode of Desperate Souls Real Rumpel Silskin's backstory that he was once a man who became the monster that he is to protect his son. The episode the Stable War reveals that Evil Queen Regina is actually justified in hating Snow White, at least in my opinion. She just doesn't have enough forgiveness in her to understand that Snow White was being manipulated by Regina's domineering mother. In The Stranger, we see Geppetto took some very selfish actions in order to save Pinocchio that involved forcing the Blue Fairy to lie to Snow White and Prince James, Prince Charming as he was also known. So to conclude, which of these shows is the better fairy tale adaptation? Well, Grimm fits the trend better of darker fairy tale adaptations, closer to the original stories to a certain extent. Once Upon a Time has that element of mystery that made Lost such a compelling drama. They both have great pedigrees, great characters, and interesting twists on the original stories. In the end, I think it's just too early to tell. One of her favorite show heroes is airing alongside Lost. I often wondered which of those was the better. And eventually heroes went off the rails. <laughs> now I pray neither Grimm nor Once Upon a Time goes off the rails. Or given the season finale of Once Upon a Time, there is a slight possibility they might just do that. Or it could take things in a whole new direction that is as of yet unimaginable. I hope for the latter. Right now I'm leaning towards Grimm, because honestly I have almost never missed an episode of Grimm, and my Twitter can attest to that. Once upon a time I went off to let accumulate in my DVR. So if you haven't checked it out, Grimm definitely checked out Grimm, definitely check it out. Second season premiere, August 13th. But once upon a time is also worth checking out. Second season premiere sometime in the fall. This concludes Mario Pacheco's School of Chair of Rage. If you like what you have seen, please like, favorite, subscribe, and comment. All those nice things. Thank you for watching. God bless you all, and God bless America.